Infinite animations, or also called looping animations, is a skill set that is extremely important for you to know as an animator, especially if you're going to be doing motion graphics. You know, infinite meaning you can't actually tell when the animation starts or stops. You can duplicate that clip down the line and you'd never know. You see it a lot in concert visuals, advertisements, uh, those canvas animations on Spotify. Looping animations are everywhere, but the issue is knowing how to get different components inside of Blender to actually loop. So if you want displacement or a motion or a movement, how do we get that to actually animate in a loop in those different situations? And that is the challenge. Um, so in today's video, I'm going to show you five different ways to get things to loop. And the fifth one is going to save you a lot of time. Um, now that is true, but I really only said that so you'll watch the whole video. So it'll boost my video of the algorithm because uh, social media people were a slave to the algorithm and whatever it asks us to do, we do it. So watch the whole video because you'll get something out of it. Now, with that being said, my Christmas sale just started. Use the code D3HOLIDAY on Blender Market. Hit the link in the description. The link is there. The code is there. Uh, you can get real-time materials, uh, my animation course, my shading course, all that stuff right now, 25% off until the end of December. You can check that out. Link in the description. Um, now let's get into these tips and tricks. All right, so in the description, um, you're gonna get the project files for these examples so that we don't have to spend the time setting them up. So open up the file that says example one and it is gonna be a couple nodes and geometry nodes, but specifically, we're just looping the noise texture. So if you're using um, it in the shader editor, you have a noise texture in um, you know, the, the creating a material, the exact same process works. Uh, this is something I did in a recent video, but I wanted to highlight it here, which all of these effects, all these tricks have been done on my channel before. So if you've been watching them, you already know these, cool. So anybody new to the channel, these are some stuff that I've been doing all the time. So check out older videos to get even more kind of in depth on these. So what we're animating right here specifically is the W because the W is going to drive the animation for the scaling of the instances. You don't really need to understand that. The whole concept is just looping the W on a texture. You'll see that pretty often in the shader editor as well. But the issue is it's just this random seed. It's W. What do you do? So here's how we do it. All right, so what we need to do is here, get your noise texture, set it up how you want your texture to look, how you want it to loop here. So we're happy and bring your W to zero. Now, if you can hear my neighbors upstairs moving their entire house. So what we wanna do is we're gonna take this noise texture, we're gonna hit Shift D, changing no components here. And then what we can do now is get in a mix shader or a mix node here. Used to be called the mix RGB. They changed that, now it's blue, it used to be yellow. Um, so I guess it's beneficial that we're going over this now. So you can see when we change this factor, nothing changes. You want to make sure that that is the case. And I'm going to go ahead right over here. See this little plus icon, bring that up and we're going to go ahead and get a timeline. That's super important. Let's just do 120 frames. Now, this part is applicable in all looping animations. You need to go to your preferences and in the animation tab, be sure your default interpolation is set to linear so that the start and stop speed is exactly the same. The default is Bezier and that the start and stop speed is not the same. Um, all right, so here we go. We need to animate some stuff. Now, always go back to frame zero. So we're gonna right over here, we're gonna hit I for the keyframe on the top noise texture here on the W and right here on the factor, bring your factor to zero. And then we're gonna go to the end, bring your factor over to one and then bring the W, I'm gonna try five. It might be too quick, but we'll see. Now that we're here at 120, start this next noise texture here at the end at zero. So hit I. Now remember we used five here. Go back to the beginning and then go back to frame zero, type in negative five. And then hit I. And what's gonna happen is you'll notice the start and stop are exactly the same, which means this is going to loop in a, uh, this is gonna animate in a loop or infinite. So watch what happens when we go to frame 120, go back to zero, there is no discernible start and stop and that is what we want. So mission accomplished, when we're animating the W, you notice this is 4D, so if you wanna get another texture, so if we wanna go get another texture here, say like uh, the Voronoi texture, you go to 3D to 4D, now that opens up that W socket. I forgot to mention that. So the W is now animating and you can animate the W on any texture in any 
instance here. This is, we're using geometry nodes, the instance here, geometry node, but you can also use it in shading. Uh, so that is example number one. Let's go ahead and open up example number two. All right, here we are. We set up these two things right here. Um, this is on, this is called, all right, so this is called example two and three because we have two looping techniques to deal with. So say I have this whole setup here and I want the camera to go through it like that. So I'm gonna hit the tilde key, go to the front, shift A, and get my camera. Uh, and I wanna, you know, animate the camera through this tube, but I wanna make, I want this tube to look like it's infinitely going, but notice I didn't make this massively long tube. I only made this little one. So how are we gonna make this look like the camera's going through this really cool tube forever? And this is something I came up with a really long time ago, and I'm calling it the box method. Essentially, if you get a plane here, and I'm hit S8. So whatever is in my scene, I want it to be able to fit within this quote unquote box. It's a plane, I'm calling it a box because it's square. So when you're setting up your infinite environment and you can go say instead of eight, we'll do it again, S2, now it's 16, and you can make clutter it with as many objects, meteorites and objects and blah, 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 blah. Set them up and keep them in here. And so what's gonna happen is now, we know this was sized by eight by because I hit S8. So that's gonna help us with the little bit of math that we need to do. So I'm gonna call down control and just bring my camera to the very edge of my box here. Then I'm gonna to go to the properties and notice it says negative eight, and that's gonna help us out. So remember that, negative eight. I'm gonna highlight this, hit M, new collection, and I'm gonna call it loop. And then what we can do is hit shift A, collection instance, loop, and then you can hold down control so it snaps, and just have those boxes just touch right there. And I'm hit Alt D to make an instance so that it's easier on a computer, Alt D. And you can bring these as far as you want um, and make them far enough to where it's not super discernible till the end. And then now we have this big long situation and whatever you change in here changes in there, which is great. So here's our camera. Let me hit the period key to make that the center here. Now remember, our camera was set to negative eight, so I'm gonna hit the back arrow, and you can hear my cat dingle, jingling in the background. It's Christmas, so I guess it's appropriate. We're gonna hit the keyframe, and then I'm gonna hit this arrow to go to the end. Remember, negative eight, because this is eight by eight, if we go to positive eight, we are at the exact edge. So if I press play, and notice when this, this uh, timeline ends, the only discernible end to the animation is at this very end when you can see the instances kind of regenerate because we're going back to the beginning. But there are many ways to hide that. We're not gonna get into that today. Uh, watch some of my other looping tutorials and you'll see that. Um, but notice it's a perfectly looping corridor animation because we started at that negative eight to positive eight or you can even do the other thing, positive eight to negative eight. If you keep all your models within that and just instance it down the line, you'll never see the end. And this is just animates forever. Now let's do another thing. This is a very, very simple technique, but you know, sometimes you can get lost in the mess. This is just a very simple thing to animate and that's rotating things by 360 degrees. So what we can do is this, this object right here on the outside, we're gonna rotate it by 360 degrees. So we're gonna bring that one to zero and I'm gonna click the keyframe, go to the end and type in 360. And now it's really fast. I wouldn't, it's kind of dizzying to look at, but it's rotating infinitely. But the reason why I wanted to show you that seems like it'd be obvious is here's a really cool trick. I'm gonna clear the keyframes. Say you want it to rotate much faster. Um, and so you'll need to do more than just one 360 rotation. Well, what you can do is hit the keyframe, go to the very end, and you could type in 360 asterisk five, 360, time five, which would be five rotations, that's now 1080. And now, I mean, it's just bonkers, but you get the idea. You can actually speed up rotations and that's a really fun way to add variety. If you have multiple things rotating and see one can go faster than the other, creates this level of randomness. All right, so we finished that example two and three. Let's go to example four. So let's open up that project file. All right, so this is the age old, let's loop some displacement. Uh, and that's gonna be done in your modifiers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you the project file with no empties, just this guy 
displaced the heck out. And so this is my modifier um, stack here to create this, but the only thing we want to worry about is just a displacement modifier. So just, you could take an object and displace it. Also, if you hear some weird noises, my neighbors, I think, are rearranging their entire apartment. So there's going to be a little banging. Can't do anything about that. All right. So, so we have our displacement here with a strength, and you can play with the strength here. Uh, but we need to go ahead and animate this. And, but we need to animate in the loop because doing this is boring. And then going into the texture, you can't really loop that. You can just change the scale, which is annoying. You want to keep just one scale. So we're going to go ahead and use some empties. We're going to set up a little thing. So we're gonna go ahead and get in a curve circle, and we're gonna go ahead and get in an empty plane axis. Make sure that empty is selected. Go over here to your constraints, here we go. Add constraint, follow path, and we're gonna select the circle. And then this circle, we're just gonna scale it out, and we're gonna use this empty to animate this. And here's a really cool trick if you've never done this before. This is another thing I've been doing forever. I have to acknowledge that because sometimes people yell at me for teaching things I've taught before, but there's always new viewers to the channel. All right, so let's go here and uh, we're gonna click on this object, go back to your modifiers, and we're gonna go this first displacement, whether you have two, but that's just to change the shape. This first displacement on your coordinates, go to object, and that's gonna allow you to select an object that when that object moves, your displacement is going to move. Object, empty. And so what happens if I click on this, I'm gonna hit R twice. Now that's driving the animation. So very simply, that 360 degree concept, we're gonna take that and I'm just gonna go ahead here in the transform settings, I'm gonna click and drag, go to the very end, click and drag here and type in 360 on both axes. And that's gonna animate that there. But then we can add another level of detail, which is rotating this guy. So we're gonna go ahead, click and drag here, make sure we're at frame zero, go to the end, type in 360, and then now there's no discernible beginning end to this weird displacement animation, but it's an endless loop that we can use. So using those empties and having them animate around helps you create randomness in your motion and visual randomness in the displacement. And you can use all these different examples here for different projects. All right. The last one, which I mentioned, is a time saver. So we're gonna go ahead and open up example number five. So here you have a timeline with 80 frames. And let's just imagine you have a scene, there are several different things looping. You don't just have three objects, you have a lot of objects. So let's just imagine, and then say you're working with a client or you decide, hey, I wanna add more frames because I want this animation to slow down. It's too quick, the way to do that add more frames. But the issue is, it's already animated. We already have these rotating by 360 degrees. Say we wanna add over like a thousand frames, right? This is bonkers, but trust me, when you're doing client work or whatever, it can get that crazy. And so say, okay, well we can just drag the keyframe out, right? Well, we just dra we're, we're dragging now 360 degrees, and maybe you could do 360 time, blah, time, da, time, da, but then, what if you want to keep the same consistency of speed? I'm giving you all these use cases. I promise you they come up. Um, here's what you do. So you have, I'm going to go ahead and select both of my keyframes, and I'm just going to select this guy out here. Now notice at frame 80, boom, they stop. So let's go here to the animation tab, and I'm going to pull up the graph editor if it's not already open. Um, I didn't know it's default open. So now, so we'll click on the animation tab right here. It's going to open up what's hopefully the graph editor, if you don't have it, click here and click on, here we go, um, graph editor. So I'm gonna click on this object here and it's gonna pull up X Euler rotation, Z Euler rotation. So I'm just gonna click on the Z rotation. I'm gonna hit the in button. It's gonna bring up the in panel and click on modifiers, add modifier and add cycles, which this cycles is nothing to do with the cycles render engine. This means a cycling motion. Uh, so they want it to cycle over and over and over and over again. So watch what happens. We're going to go all the way to frame 80. I'm going to press play and notice this object is just going to keep going. And of course it didn't. So let's click on the X Euler rotation as well and add the uh, cycles button. Okay. So now add the cycles modifier to both. And I'm going to press play and watch what happens at frame 80 right here. It keeps going. 
And what happened is it's going to take this animation, literally whatever you did, and wherever it stops, it's going to keep that going and just forever and ever and ever until you decide for it to stop. Um, and so in this case, you can make a longer loop. And because it's 80 frames, use that math. And so we'd stop at what? 116. Say we wanted to make this, um, sorry, 160. Yeah, let's hope my math is right. So let's stop our frames at 160. Please loop. Okay, it does. So say you wanted it to just go for longer. You needed to have other things. Um, now, that's looping forever. Now, that, that is another example. Say we wanted the camera to move. I remember once, specifically one time, the uh, animation was looping, but the camera was going too fast. I wanted to slow down the camera, but keep everything the same motion. I was able to use this cycles modifier in there to keep that going, and I could introduce more things to the animation. So this is gonna save you some time to not have to reanimate every single little thing. Just go and add the modifier, bop, 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 bop. Just add that cycles modifier to everything. It's gonna save your life, it's gonna save your time. Um, that's it, that's all five things. I hope this helps you with your projects. Um, these are just really fun and things I have to deal with every day with my animations, there you go. Uh, don't forget about the uh, Christmas sale, linked in the description, check out all the details on that, 25% off. Uh, but with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.